Hello, it's Claudio and today I was wondering how I could use Python to search for videos on YouTube without having to do it myself. And it was actually pretty simple. That's one of the things I love about Python. It allows you to create programs quickly and just with a few lines of code. In this video, I will show you how to search for a video on YouTube using Python. The program I will write can easily be used for any search. First, let's have a look at how YouTube search works. In order to be able to search for videos using a program, we need to understand the URL structure used by YouTube when we search for a video. If I search for Mozart directly in YouTube, I get redirected to the following URL. So youtube.com slash results question mark search underscore query equal Mozart. So the part that changes in the URL is the search term. Also another thing to look at is that if I click on one of the videos, the format of the URL for this video is youtube.com slash watch question mark V equal and then an 11 characters unique identifier. Let's start creating a simple Python program that does this specific search and returns the HTML from YouTube. The main package used in Python to work with URLs is urllib, and it includes several modules. The one we are interested in is urllib.request that is used to open and read URLs. So let's use urllib.request to get the HTML for the search results page on YouTube and then print it. So first of all, let's use an import statement to import the urllib.request module. Then we use the URL open function of the urllib.request module to get the HTML of the YouTube search results page. Let's execute our program to make sure there are no errors. We are not seeing anything in the terminal because we don't have any print statement in our program. For HTTP and HTTPS URL, the URL open function returns an object whose body can be read using the read method. So I can use the print statement with HTML object and apply the read method to it. So as you can see, we are getting some HTML back from YouTube. The URL open function returns a bytes object because there is no way for URL open to know the encoding of the stream it receives from the HTTP server. For this reason, you also need to remember to decode the bytes object from the read method to string using the decode method. Now I want to search for a specific part of the HTML. So as you can see in the HTML, you have an href that contains the pattern slash watch question mark v equal and the 11 characters identifier 
that I showed you before when we did the search directly in YouTube. So basically this is what we need to append to www.youtube.com to obtain the URL of a specific video. So to get the URL of each video in the YouTube search results page, I have to find occurrences in the HTML similar to this one. But how do we do that? To find occurrences in the HTML that include the 11 characters identifier, we can use regular expressions. A regular expression, also known as a regex, is a sequence of characters that defines a search pattern. In this case, the sequence of characters we are looking for is slash watch question mark v equal and then a string made of 11 characters. The module used in Python for regular expression is called RE. For the program we are creating, we just need to know one specific function of this module, findAll. The function findAll returns all non-overlapping matches for a specific pattern in a string, like the HTML content of the YouTube search results page. The generic syntax of the findAll function is re.findAll and then as a first argument we pass the pattern and as a second argument the string in which we are looking for that pattern. Regular expression patterns in Python are prefixed with the letter R. So once again this is the string we are looking for in the HTML. And here is the regular expression pattern. So let's explain it. R, as mentioned before, is used to define regular expression patterns. Backslash in this case is used to escape a special character like the question mark. Backslash S matches any non-white space character. Open curly bracket 11 close curly bracket, specifies that exactly 11 copies of the previous regular expression should be matched, in this case backslash s. So basically we are looking for 11 non-white space characters. And finally the round parentheses indicate the start and end of a group. We use a group to define what the regular expression has to return. In this case, we just want to get back the occurrences of the 11 character identifiers. We are not really interested in the slash watch question mark v equal part because it's generic for any YouTube video. So we only want to get these strings for every single video in the YouTube search result page. So let's go back to the Python code we've written so far. The next step is to add the line that using the findAll function identifies the pattern we are looking for. So first of all we need to import the RE module. So we get videos underscore IDs, that is basically a list that contains all the 11 character strings for each one of the videos in the YouTube search results page. And then we print this list.
let's run our program. And as you can see, we have a list and each element of the list is an 11 character string that identifies a specific YouTube video. And finally, we can get the full URL of a YouTube video simply concatenating the 11 character string and the pattern we have seen before with watch question mark v equal to www.youtube.com. Let's do that. In this case, we are using index zero. So we are using the first element of the video underscore IDs list. That is basically the first result in the YouTube search results page. Let's run our program. And here we get the URL of the first YouTube video in the search results page for the search term Mozart. Let's actually confirm that this video is correct. And as you can see, the video matches the search we are doing. So the video we are getting back from the YouTube search is correct. Now the next thing we can do in this script is to define a variable called search underscore keyword. and assign the string Mozart to it. Then we can update this line of the code, remove Mozart from here, and concatenate the value of the search underscore keyword variable. Let's run our program again. And everything works well. Why are we defining a variable and setting its value to Mozart? Simply because if I want to search for something else, let's say for Chopin, I can easily modify the value of this variable. Another option could be to pass the value Chopin to the script instead of hard coding it in the script itself. Now, let's say I want to search for Mozart piano. Let's execute the program. And as you can see, we are getting an error back. It looks like this is actually complaining about the space. So it looks like this program only works for search queries that contain a single term. What do you think? How would you update it to support multiple terms? I will leave it for you to solve it. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is it for this video. In this video we have covered quite a lot and you also have a quite interesting program that you can expand the way you prefer. Let's recap what I explained. First of all, we had a look at the URL lib package and the URL lib dot request module. Then I have introduced the concept of regular expressions in Python. And finally, you have learned how to use a Python program to perform a YouTube search. If there's something that is not clear, please ask any questions in the comments below. And hit the subscribe button if you want to know more about Python and you want to get notified when I create a new video about programming in Python. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.